Okay, welcome to part two of my Tokyo Triathlon Olympic preview. I've been itching to do this one because finally the Australian team has been announced. So um, I've been waiting. I was going to do one earlier. I was really itching to get it done. Um, but yeah, just holding off on until Australia finally got around to naming their team. The deadline for teams to be named was 5th of July. So uh, today is the 6th. So the day after that, um, the ITU website hasn't been um, completely updated with all the teams. So Australia's still missing off there. But um, I think we know who all the main teams are and who's been selected. Uh, so purpose of this video, I reckon we go and look into just a little bit about each of the Australian athletes um, and have a little, little bit of a look at their strengths and weaknesses and maybe sort of uh, a bit of a semi-prediction of what we think they might be able to achieve at the Games. Um, and then also they've released, the Olympic uh, organisers have released the, um, not the start positions, but the transition positions uh, for each nation. Um, and also, so for the individual events and also for the mixed team relay. So thought we'll just have a quick look at kind of the numbers, how many countries have qualified um, and a little bit of some of the uh, interesting parts. So uh, just share my screen real quick. So I just um, have been transcribing the competitor list onto a little Excel to make it easier. Uh, but just some interesting stats. So 39 countries are being represented in the individual races, um, 17 teams in the mixed team relay. Uh, plus there's this, um, there's this ASICS World Triathlon team. Um, so six athletes uh, under development from smaller nations. So not, probably not quite as bad as Eric B. Eel, but I think that kind of uh, level, um, they'll be obviously an opportunity for the smaller nations to have a crack. Uh, so that one's been funded through an ASICS program there. Um, interesting, Australia is the only team to have qualified uh, the maximum number of athletes, which is three males and three females. So that's quite handy, especially from the selector's point of view, because for the mixed team rate relay, you have two male, two female. Uh, so this gives them a bit of flexibility to maybe pick someone in that third spot who might just be there for the as a mixed team relay specialist um, and I actually think Australia have a pretty good opportunity uh, to do well in the mixed relay we've got a pretty well balanced team uh, so why don't we quickly have a look at the Australians have been who have been selected I haven't updated my spreadsheet here but um, I've got some pictures so in the males, um, we had Jake Bertwistle who had a automatic um, uh, selection. So he's been selected for quite a while. Matt Hauser and Aaron Royal. So quickly talk about each of them. So Jake Bertwistle, this is gonna be his first Olympic games. Um, and he's mainly, I reckon, selected off the back of his running ability. He's very, very good runner. Like, um, so you'll find sort of his race profile is uh, uh, not 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 top level swimmer. It'll be sort of mid pack, and he'll have to work his way during the bike leg. Hopefully, he can get into a decent pack during the bike leg, and he'll probably be like second pack on the bike. And his hopes for the games will be that that second pack isn't too far back off the first pack or the lead pack and that they can bridge across quite early in the bike leg and he can just sort of uh, settle into the bike leg and hopefully come off not too far, not too deep in that pack into the run leg. And if his running's going as well as it normally is, he should be uh, fairly competitive. Um, interesting with Jake Burt Whistle uh, recently. So he competed in the Yokohama uh, triathlon, uh, which was the first World um, World Series event kickoff this year, didn't do that well. Um, and the main reason from reports was he got sick in the water there. 
So, and there were some other reports of people getting sick from the water in Yokohama. So that could actually obviously be a quite an interesting uh, uh, factor to consider. Hopefully he's sort of been, obviously he would have been talking to uh, whatever support staff he has. And hopefully they've got some strategies around that. Maybe they take some um, tablets or something for seasickness or travel sickness. Maybe that helps or um, hopefully they've sort of looked into that a bit more and we, we don't see that happen. Uh, and it was interesting when I heard about that, um, I then looked back at like the 2019 test event and you could see uh, that during the swim leg, the organisers had actually put out these like um, barriers in the water to kind of stop some of the outside water from the inlet where they swim coming into the swim leg area. So obviously it must be a known fact that there's some pollution or something wrong with the water there. So that could obviously, you know, you could be the fittest athlete in the world, but you know, you get sick in the swim and that could really derail your event. So that's quite interesting. Uh, then, so we, so Jake was the first one automatically picked. And then we had uh, other two spots up for grabs and Matt Hauser and Aaron Royal. So Matt Hauser, he's uh, going to have quite a different race profile compared to Matt How uh, compared to Jake Burtwistle. So Matt Hauser is a very strong swimmer and very good biker. Uh, and of course, these athletes are good across the board, um, but it's just some athletes are better than others in certain areas. Uh, but his run is definitely not up to the level of Jake's. So we're going to see two completely different racing profiles unless they race to a different style. Um, if they race to their natural abilities, we're going to see different profiles for these guys. Matt House is going to be um, in the front group out of the swim. And so naturally, he's a good enough biker to stick with the front group to the run leg. So for him, uh, it's either a matter of his run leg has picked up significantly and he's going to stay with that front pack on the bike, get off the bike and chance his run legs and see how he goes. Or maybe he actually tries to go on a breakaway um and gets get a bit of a gap a buffer on the bike leg come off the run a few seconds ahead um and hopefully you know that might be enough for him to jag a spot on the podium uh, so that's how i predict his race profile to be interesting um back in 2016 in the commonwealth games both these guys were racing matt hauser like he was in like what i was just saying in that front pack out of the swim so there's about seven of them on the bike you know he was with both the brownlee boys henry schumann um and so he came off the bike in the front pack he ended up finishing fourth in the com games so that's his first com games really great achievement um but jake burtwistle came from well behind and ran him down and jake ran himself into second so that's the kind of damaging run leg that Jake Burtwistle can have. Um, but at the same time, you know, coming from behind is quite a uh, nervous sort of strategy, I guess, or a nervous position. You'd much prefer to be up near the front um, and sort of know where all your competition is. Um, so that's where Matt Hauser's sort of racing profile is going to be. And then our third male, Aaron Royal. So I believe this is at least his second Com Games. Um, he finished top 10 in Rio. Uh, Olympics and he's going to have again much similar racing profile to Matt Hauser he's a swim biker um, quite a good runner and also with that uh, this being his second games he's going to have uh, that experience under his belt as well which is going to come quite in handy uh, he's been performing quite well uh, in the past uh, at least at Leeds triathlon I think it was he performed quite well he was strong on the swim bike uh, but he has uh, had some injuries earlier in the year. Um, so who knows how that is going, whether he's sort of fixed that or not. Um, so that's probably his uh, downside, I would say. Uh, their chances for these three guys, look, um, it's wide open, the men's event. Like there's at least 10 or 12 blokes who could probably win it. Uh, on any given day so it's going to come down to a bit of luck and um, maybe who chances there are but if I was to rank the three guys at this point in time I'd probably you know I'd probably go Matt Hauser first Jake second Aaron third 
Um, and that's mainly from the point of view that Matt's going to be in a really good position uh, throughout the race, whereas Jake's going to have to work his way uh, in the bike leg up to the front pack, which, you know, that can generally require more effort on the bike, which could tank his legs for the run. Uh, so that's kind of why I pick it that way. Um, as far as metal hopes go, uh, I hate to say this, but I honestly don't think in the individual event we're going to get a medal. I think we could see... Well, I mean, we could potentially see all three of them get top 10. Um, that, that's quite a possibility, but unfortunately, I don't see a medal out of these three. But could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Really do. So let's go to the girls now. So the first automatic pick we had was Ashley Gentle. Uh, so along with Jake Burt Whistle, those two were automatically picked and locked their positions in a couple months ago. Uh, and then the second and third spots went to Emma Jeffcoat and to Jazz Hedgeland. So Ashley Gentle, our automatic pick, um, definitely the right choice, I think, as far as an automatic pick goes. Uh, she's definitely the most consistent over the last few years. Um, comes from more of a running background, so very Jake Burt Whistle-like. Uh, has to work a lot harder in the swim. Um, same kind of racing profile, be a little bit further back in the swim and will have to work her way through the race on the bike and the run. Uh, but she does have a very good run. So again, she could um, go quite well. Uh, the only sort of downside I see with her is, I mean, I haven't um, only sort of periodically checked the socials and that, but it doesn't appear she's done that much racing this season. I mean, the last event I think she might have done was the Malulaba Triathlon. And prior to that, it was like a bribey triathlon and she's done some like time trial cycling races locally in Brisbane, but she hasn't sort of competed on that uh, international stage this year, I don't think. So uh, that's obviously because of COVID, it's very hard to do that. Um, coaches, coaches and athletes have to weigh up whether they do go international. And then, you know, the problem is, do they come back and spend two weeks in quarantine, which is obviously gonna interrupt your training massively or do they stay overseas? So that's kind of what um, Jake Bergwistle has done. He went overseas to Yokohama and raced and then went to Leeds and raced. And I believe they're in like a training camp in Spain. So he's basically left Australia and they've just stayed um, internationally because there's a lot more flexibility with uh, quarantine procedures and traveling and COVID issues uh, versus sort of staying in Australia and coming back and forward between Australia. Uh, so yeah, that's probably a bit of a drawback. Like I really think the more sort of international racing they have is going to be much more beneficial. Um, so that could be a big problem. We'll see. Uh, next one, Emma Jeffcoat. So Emma Jeffcoat comes from a surf life saving background. So she is a very strong swimmer. I would not be surprised to see her top three coming out of the swim leg or even leading the swim leg in the in the individual women's uh but running is her downside so she's gonna have once again totally different profile to ashley gentle she's going to be in a very good position out of the swim and on the bike leg and yeah how far can they stay ahead on the bike leg can they stop the second pack catching them um and can they stay away on the run you know is, is there a potential for her to uh, break away on the bike with someone else. There's a few, quite a few strong riders in the women's field. So possibly won't be surprising to see a breakaway in the women's bike, uh, in the women's event on the bike leg. And thirdly, Jazz Hedgeland. So Jazz Hedgeland and Matt Hauser both train in the same squad on the Gold Coast. She's really like, from what I can see, um, she's had a very good all round performances in pretty much every race she's done uh, for the, at least the past 18 months, two years, and seems to have sort of stepped it up a level. Like she, there was like in Bribey, you know, the Bribey World Triathlon Champs, they held a specific race for like the elites of these guys and girls level. And she actually beat Ashley Gentle at that race. So, uh, you know, she's showing she's got ability and um, once again, going to be her first try, uh, her first Olympic Games. So going to be very interesting how she goes. I think she'll do really well. 
Uh, will she be, you know, competitive for a medal? I don't think so. Uh, top 10, once again, will be, would be a very good result for her. Um, so in a nutshell, that's the top three, or sorry, that's the three picks from the guys and girls. My sort of overall predictions for the women, once again, unfortunately, I don't see the women getting a medal. Um, once again, in the women's field, it's just so stacked. It's going to be very difficult. Uh, but I do think, like all round, we'll see some really good performances. I think Australia's best hopes for a medal will be the mixed team relay, and I do see them, like I see them, a very strong contender for a medal there. I, I don't see them winning it, um, but I do think a silver, silver or a bronze would be definitely on the table there. Um, so that sort of like that's a in a nutshell the what my sort of thoughts on the guys and girls. Please let me know uh, what you think of the picks, what you think their chances are. You know, I, I, like one thing I'm really interested in is, is how the race profile is going to unfold. Uh, I really hope in both the men's and the women's events we see a breakaway on the bike because most of the time these events come down to who is the fastest runner because even if they're not able to keep up in the swim, generally with the pack dynamics on the bike, they can, if you're not a great swimmer and not at the front, you can kind of work your way uh, back up to the front pack on the bike leg. And then if you've ridden smart, um, you've saved your legs and you can basically use your full running potential and, you know, get to the front. So that's generally how the races unfold. Um, it is very hard to get a breakaway. Uh, it's not like a cycling race where you have a team and you all sit down beforehand and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to try and break away on the bike. Um, so it's going to be like, on the day, in the race, who comes out of the, if a breakaway is going to happen, who comes out of the swim together in the front pack and who's willing to basically risk it to push out the watts, get a gap on the bike um, and then get a gap coming into the run enough that they can hold out the faster, faster runners. So that, that's going to be the more interesting race for us spectators from a selfish point of view. Uh, if we do get that, it's going to be a great event to watch. Um, so, yeah, that's the uh, picks for the Australian team. I, like, I, I think those were basically no-brainer picks. I think they chose the right people. Uh, but as usual, man, like, you can only pick three guys, three girls. Like, that's the maximum you can pick. It's not like, uh, you know, a footy team where you can pick, uh, you know, uh, I know look, the rugby sevens, they got seven a team, so they've probably got reserves as well. So it's not like that where there's lots of people um, who have a chance of getting on the team. Uh, very small amounts of spots. Of course, people are going to be upset if they don't get pick and picked, and there have been quite a, a couple that I know of who aren't too happy. Um, but, look, it's just the nature of the beast. Um, selectors will have picked their people for their reasons. And I reckon the hard thing for those who didn't get picked is the mixed team relay. So that would have been a fair bit of a factor in deciding who got those discretionary spots. Uh, because in the mixed team relay, team relay, the way those sort of event, events unfold is if you have someone in the team who is weak in a certain leg, then that really uh, gets shown in the mixed team relay. And teams that do have someone who is not like up to par at, in a certain leg, they generally get lapped or they get gapped by a long way. So you kind of need to pick a team who's got um, each athlete is good across the board. You don't want someone who's really good in one leg, but then really bad in another. I don't think because you will see a bit of a gap on the, in the, in the relay. So that's probably a big factor in why maybe some people missed out. Um, I think that's about all to go through as far as the individual athletes from Australia goes. Uh, the only other, uh, other piece of information which has now come out is the transition start areas for the event. So if we go to the race number allocation for the transitions. So here we've got the transition draw for the men. Um, basically on the left-hand side here, you have the dismount line. 
So imagine they're uh, finishing the bike leg. They come through here, get off their bike, and then they've got to run through here with their bike and then put their bike in their little transition area, put their running shoes on and then run out this way. So this is the men's draw Australia. They all, they put, they group the countries together. So 10, 11, 12 here is Australia. So who, um, between the three guys, which one gets each spot? I'm not sure. They probably just um, flip a coin between them, between themselves. Um, or maybe if that's going to be their race number, like say Matt Hauser gets race number 12, then I guess he gets that spot. Is there a good spot? Is there a bad spot? I mean, you're going to see probably 30 or so guys. So there's 56 guys. You probably see 30 or so come into this line all together. So whether you want to be running with your bike through the carnage, then get to the end, then put your shoes on and run out, or whether you want to just want to get in, bike in, and then run through, I like it. it's probably going to be just mayhem through here. Um, worst case, I reckon, is like you're leading off the bike, you jump off, and your transition's right here, and you've got everyone up your bum. That could cause that could be quite interesting. Um, but yeah, generally, I think if I was racing or coming off the bike, I'd probably want to have my bike down this area because then you can just come in, get rid of your bike, shoes on, and then run this length um without having to uh, walk run your bike through so if those are going to be the primo spots our top nations here britain america belgium and uh south africa do, do have one really good athlete henry schumann so he'll be down here too so they're you know I'd probably say that they've got the primo spots there and then we've got new zealand and france down here they're not bad spots either whereas australia we're kind of in the middle there it's not it's not great, but probably won't uh, make that big a difference. Um, in the female draw, female individual events, so Australia's up this end, not too bad. Um, if we look at the nations which have probably the good spot, um, I don't think any of the athletes in these nations, Switzerland, there's a couple of good athletes there. And then down this end, Netherlands, there is a couple of good athletes from the Netherlands racing and Britain. So they've got some good spots as well. And then lastly, in the mixed team relay. So less uh, countries in the mixed team relay. There's only, I think, uh, 17. Yeah, 17 teams in the mixed relay. We've got 18 here. So one of them is will be the development country. Um, or maybe that's the Republic I'm not sure what they're calling the Russian athletes. It's like athletes from the Russian Federation or something is ridiculous. Like it's totally not even a punishment. It's still the Russian country, like the whole drug, drug doping scandal. They haven't been really negatively affected whatsoever. They're supposed to be kicked out of games completely, the Russian uh, nation. Um, but now they're just all racing under a different banner. Uh, so yeah, there's the outline for the transition draw for the mixed team relay. Uh, look, that's about it from me, but it's been great to be able to like wait, get the um, selections for the Australians. We know what the team we've got. We know who to look out for. Uh, yeah, so let me know who you think your picks are, uh, how you think we're going to go. Did we select the right athletes? Who knows? We'll see on the day. Uh, but there's less, there's just over two weeks to go to the games. Um, and in the next video, We'll actually look through the other countries and see their chances or what I think their chances might be um, and talk a bit more about how maybe the race will unfold in both the men's and the women's. So that's it for me for this one. Um, good to get it out and uh, we'll talk to you soon. See ya.